Hey, Sweaty Fish, 25th September 2018. And I will tell you, there are so many things that I want to share with you guys. I'm just going to try, okay? I'm probably going to have to do separate videos. I really, it's that much. But anyway, this is really cool because this happened this morning as, uh, you know, I'm sitting here and the phone rings and it's my brother John, the Watchman, right? And right at that time, I was reading my morning Bible verse. This is what I pulled up, Luke 2, 7 through 11. And I'm sitting there talking to him. We're talking about, you know, Trump and we're talking about the double-headed snake and all these things, right? And I'm looking at this, Luke 2, 7 through 11, and it's literally when Jesus was born, right? And this time of year, many of us, myself included, believe Jesus was born right around this time of year, right? 9, 7, and 2, 11. That's where a lot of people think they get the 9-11 from, you know, when they use that in their dark rituals and everything, which could very well be true. But that 9-11 could fall on any number of days, you know what I mean? I mean, today could be Jesus' birthday. It literally could be today or tomorrow. And the reason I say or tomorrow is because as I'm talking to John, right, and we're talking about the snakes and how everything fell on the map, <laughs> that crazy 33, 22, you know, all that stuff from, uh, from the snake to where they're going to put the arch. And don't forget, the arch is going up tomorrow, right? And I have that here to share with you somewhere the arch goes up tomorrow anyway it's it's tomorrow uh let me see i do want to show that though because it's important you know just to show it the the institute for digital archaeology washington dc tomorrow the 26th from 2 30 23 to 33 isn't that just you know ritualistic <laughs> but anyway so we're talking about that stuff, and, and we're talking about uh, Trump at the UN. And both of us are like, you know how you were putting the lines from the where the arch is going to be to the snake? and every, it's, I wonder what it would be to the UN. I mean, we both kind of had this thought at the same time. So I just pulled up the map right there while we were talking. And everything's starting to get really sticky, you guys. So bear with me if this doesn't... Uh, if this doesn't, you know, respond the way I would like it to. But, um, so I went from the UN, right, down to where the arch is going to be in Washington, D.C. All right, this is the UN compound right there. And if we go down to Washington, we'll see where the, uh, the arch is going to be, right? See how it's kind of sticking like that? It's acting all wonky. But that's where the arch will be, right there, okay? literally right there and this line when i told him what it was he about he was like no way i was the same way i was like no way the measurements for that for that line in kilometers is 333 kilometers exactly exactly to the un from where they're putting the arch of triumph tomorrow exactly and it's at a heading of 232. Two. And the 333 three, three exactly on the dot, right? And so we're continuing to talk and everything. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm reading a little bit of scripture here and there. And it dawns on me, you know, as I'm looking at my, my Bible scripture, uh, that there's a 711 in here too. So it reminds me of Noah. And I remembered that today, or tomorrow rather, is the 17th day of the 7th month. 17 Tishri, the 26th of September. That's the day that the ark rested. Okay? That was in Genesis 8. Genesis 7, 11 is when the skies opened. And then Genesis 8 is when the ark rested. And the waters returned from off the earth continually 
and after the end of a hundred and fifty days the waters were abated and the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month it rested on the mountains right there tomorrow okay but that it didn't end there because when you're reading it was a hundred and fifty days right to the end of the flood that's that's how i see it right so i gotta go back from this day here 150 days because that's just what i gotta do right oh geez wait till i talk about that guy so i go back 150 days and it lands us on april the 29th of this year okay exactly and april the 29th was um literally what's known as the second passover okay and it fell on the 14th of Iyar, which is crazy, right? This is known as the second Passover. April 29th, 2018, okay? Second Passover was established in 1312 by Moses, okay? Remember the, the 333 kilometers from the map? Well, this is pretty cool right here because if you go from 1312 where... The second Passover was established, right? And I'm going to show you where that is, too. Um, up to 2018, you know, you just add the two together, essentially. And it's crazy, but it brings you, you go to from 13, 12, and we add on the 2018, you get 3,330 years, okay? just exactly the same as that it, this is the craziness of it and where this is written in the bible is in numbers okay numbers nine and get a load of this okay it, and because some of the men couldn't go to the passover because they had been defiled okay that was that was the problem so moses went and asked god okay see numbers nine six there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man. They couldn't keep the Passover. So Moses goes to God and God tells him, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man or posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, that he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord the fourteenth day of the second month at even. They shall keep it. You see what I'm saying? And so that puts you right on April 29th, 150 days before tomorrow, which is the 17th day of the seventh month. The second chance. That's, that's what kind of stuck with me on that. It's like they call this the second chance. The day thus represents the second chance achieved by Teshuvah, the power of repentance and return. Isn't that crazy? So, I mean, all this stuff, and it continues. I, it just does. I wish I could keep up with it better, but this is really pointing a lot to tomorrow about something happening. It really is. And now I have to show you this guy because you saw him, right? The Philadelphia Flyers, and this fits right into everything. The Philadelphia Flyers introduced their new mascot yesterday. Like, it's happening, you know, right now. And his name's Gritty, and he's a big orange, you know, 33 orange monster uh, that some people call for euthanization. But think about this, right? Philadelphia, okay, Flyers, and you also have the Philadelphia Eagles, right? Gritty, we could get into all the things attached to this whole thing, all right? Now we see his little um, insignia here. Let's see, the little flyers. Look at this thing. He looks like a demon, a devil. He looks like the devil, really. I, that would scare the heck out of kids, don't you think? Anyway, I digress. You know the flyers little um, logo here? Well, get a load of this. We're in Washington, D.C. on the map, right? The District of Columbia. The Cube. Oh, this place is just so evil, man. But... <laughs> This is just nuts. We're, we're in uh, Washington, D.C. on the map, and everybody knows. Well, they should. If you don't, that's, that's understandable. But the capital itself is literally encompassed by 
a giant owl. And you can see the owl as clear as can be. Embodied there, the, the twin government building with its dome and everything, right? Columbia on top. I'm sorry, I could keep going, but think about the owl. And then think about the uh, Philadelphia Flyers logo, right? This is crazy. And then just flip it on its side and then compare it to the owl. You'll get a kick out of this. There he is, the owl. All right, now let's bring up that logo again. Let's, let's make it bigger. What do you think of that? Isn't that a little bit nutty? Because that's what it is, man. That's the Philadelphia Flyers logo right there. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know why I see half this stuff, you guys, but I do. So I have to share with you. And incidentally, this uh, line that runs all the way up from the uh, Washington, D.C. arch to the U.N. goes smack diddly dab through Philadelphia where they just revealed gritty. Let's see if we can find, there it is. There's Philadelphia right there. And there's your line. The whole eastern seaboard right here. So this is a big part of their ritual. This is definitely a big part of it. Did I show you how this line, you're not gonna believe this. I think I might've showed this. This is crazy. This It just goes on and on and on, you guys. You see how it comes across Manhattan here, right? The UN across Manhattan goes down. Look at here at the Arch of Washington. Look at that. I mean, you could you if I move that line just a tiny bit over there, that line goes through that arch. If you can believe that. To the other arch from the UN. This is nuts. But I hear Trump just spouting off about how he is uh, not wanting to be in the world governance. Okay, Trump tells assembly he rejects global governance. I don't think that's going to go over very well. But, you know, just all this stuff, you guys. We know that the time is short, that the times are here to where you need to make a decision on you know, your eternal soul. It's like, you know, Jesus Christ came, I mean, directly from God in order to give us the door to God. And, you know, when this life is over, it's over. And you don't want eternal darkness. You, you just seek Jesus. I just, I'm not a preacher, but I know that Jesus Christ is the only thing that set me free. And I am free indeed, and I want you all to be too. So seek after him above all things. Peace and grace to you all. Many fish. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, 